Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we are gonna talk about React and why I don't use Create React app anymore, and you shouldn't either. So we're gonna talk about SSR, CSR, and SSG. If you don't know what those things are, well, you're gonna need to watch. I'm not gonna give you the full version of the names. This episode's also brought to you by Red Bull. It's a big conspiracy out there that people kept being attacked by bulls because apparently Red Bull changes your skin pigmentation to red. What a load of shite. So anyway, let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna explain everything through this nice Canva uh, illustration here that was put together by my lovely fiance. So give her three claps in the comments. Okay, so CSR, what is CSR? Client-side rendering. This was the new thing back in 2011-ish, 10? I don't even know the dates anymore. But essentially what we did is we moved away from server-side rendering to client-side rendering to gain advantage of these dynamic pages and try to make websites feel more app-like. So create React app, by default use this client-side rendering. So let's look a little bit what happens under the hood. So when you load up a client-side rendered app, what happens is when you go to the browser, hit the link, enter, the server sends back an empty HTML file with a bundle JS attached to it, okay? A JavaScript file attached to it. So initially we're gonna see a blank page on our screen. All right, so empty HTML, nothing to see. The browser then starts downloading our JavaScript file. We still don't see anything. Once that uh, JavaScript file is downloaded, your, uh, the browser starts executing uh, the code, our React code, which essentially starts mounting together the components and rendering out the components. And once that's done, we have a fully dynamic page, all right? That's interactable. You can go through different pages without any more loading times. Uh, so once your JavaScript file is all loaded up and your React code gets executed, you, this, you have a lightning fast speed app. All right, now what's the problem with this? The problem is that you get this blank page for a pretty long time, especially if you have a huge app and a huge JavaScript file. Because remember, everything that you write and react out with Create React App is essentially going to be bundled in this one JavaScript file. So, um, so essentially, people are not going to see any content until this giant file loads up. Now, some people might also have JavaScript disabled then your whole application is not gonna work. It's also bad for SEO, since we get served an empty HTML file back, and well, there's no content there for the web crawlers to crawl, or the robots to get one of the two. Um, but the advantages are that once this file loads up, everything is incredibly fast and fluid and intuitive. Um, so an example I would give for where to use something like this would be like a login page where you don't essentially need the SEO, right? You don't really care if it shows up on Google, like a user dashboard that's highly interactable with lots of buttons and changes, just lots of dynamic data changes, all right? That's where the advantage of client-side rendering is. So let's look at server-side rendering. So what happens on the server side is that the server essentially builds out uh, the whole file for you, all right? So here, as you can see, it's loading. So server builds a HTML page and sends it back to the browser. Now in your, if you're using Next, all right, the, the server side rendering with React. So here, let's say we're building out like a movie app, movie list, like a, like a popular movie list app. Um, everything happens here on the server, like all the fetching of the data, building out the components, building up basically the full page of how it would be rendered out. And that's being sent over to the browser. So as you can see, our page is already fully being rendered out. And what happens after that is some JavaScript is being downloaded in the background. And that is called 
hydration, all right? It's a process where it initially paints out the full HTML page and then it adds the interactivity to it, all right? Once that JavaScript is loaded up in the background, your page also becomes fully dynamic. All right, so that's the advantage of this is that when you get the HTML file back to the browser, it's already going to have all the content loaded up. All right, it's not going to be an empty HTML with a bundle JS attached to it. So it's really good for SEO. So again, an example here would be something like Reddit, where you want all the posts to be Google searchable, right? Everything, uh, all the content to be fully rendered out. So that would be a really good example. Now, what's the downside of this? Well, if you go from page to page, it's going to need to build out another HTML file and do all the fetching. So it's going to be quite slow. The advantage is that like the initial paint, so the first load is going to be really quick, but the navigating between stuff is going to be slow. Whereas CSR client side initially is slow because we have one big bundle JS, but once that loads up, everything else is really quick. All right, and lastly, we have SSG, which is statically generated websites. S static, what is it called? Oh, I forgot, static, static. Okay, let's move on. I'm gonna put up a little text here on the screen. That was silly goose. Um, okay, so what happens here is that the server essentially builds out all the HTML file that files that the website uses beforehand, all right, on build time. So when you take your your app, your project, and upload it up to Vercel or to GitHub or whatever, it starts generating all the files out with the data pre-built, okay? So essentially, you're left with static, uh, static uh, files, right, with all the text and images already made. So when the user visits the website, it loads up almost instantly, right? Because it's like, yeah, static HTML page that's like handwritten by you. So it's going to be incredibly, incredibly quick. And then the same process happens here where the browser downloads a bit of JavaScript in the background to add some interactivity to it. Okay, so those are the three. Now, there are upsides and downsides of SSG. Uh, first of all, being that it's incredibly quick, that's the upside. The downside is that we're building these pages out on build. Uh, so when we essentially upload um, our project to the internet. So basically, if some data changes, then this is going to be stale. It's not going to be updated, right? Whereas with server side and CSR, we can visit another page or do a refresh and then the content updates. So imagine like we have, um, let's say we push a, we add a tweet, right? With client side and SSR, we can do a, a request where we push some data up and then we're going to see the changes live. With SSG, it's not um, until we regenerate these files. All right. But there's also one more thing that I'm going to talk about a little bit where we can kind of solve this issue. So where would SSG be useful for? Well, something like a blog would be really good where content doesn't really update every second or millisecond or so. There's not too much interactivity on the website. Um, so you're fine if the user sees, you know, a page that is 10 minutes old, you know, and the data hasn't changed. So something like a blog or like a landing page, for example, for me, for the courses, uh, like the course pages, that would be a great example where, you know, I don't really need to update anything on there. I'll add my text, I'll add my images and everything. That file is going to stay the same pretty much for the whole time. All right. So that's it. So again, CSR for login pages, dashboards, uh, highly interactable, pages um, that don't really need SEO. Uh, SSR, again, for something like Reddit, where you still have dynamic data, uh, but you need great SEO. And SSG for data that doesn't need to be updated frequently, uh, and you want it to be super fast, and SEO is great. So blogs, 
you know, landing pages and stuff like that. All right, so those are the TI. I wanna show you a quick example also in the browser and how to implement these in, um, in Next.js, which is also the big point I wanted to get to. Um, this is why you use Next, because with Next.js, you can use CSR, SSR, and SSG in tandem. So essentially you can make a hybrid app and benefit of all of these three different things. So I can have a page that's SSG, I can have a page that's SSR, and I can use uh, client-side rendering if I have a login page or something like that, all in one app. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to implement that now. So let's go over here. So this is Next.js. All right, so Create, Re Create React App doesn't give you any of these. Um, I mean, it's just a library. So Next is a full, full-on framework built onto it. So I have three examples here. Let's start off with uh, client-side rendering, which is probably what you're used to anyway, uh, if you've done React before. So take a look, I'll break this code down very quickly and easily. So essentially I want to fetch some popular movies. Okay. And the way I do that is we can get rid of this, by the way, ignore this. I'll just delete it. There we go. I'll just say popular movies here. Popular movies. Cool. Save. Let's open this up in the browser. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Let's go over to localhost 3000. There we go. So client side rendering. Here we go. That's it. So again, just a list of movies. That's what we have. Let me close this up. So the way you would do it is you'd create a state, right? You'd fetch a fetch from an API, in this case, the movie database, and then you set the state, state set movies, movies, not results. All right. And then when the, when, when the component mounts, you want to fetch those movies. And then here we're essentially just rendering it out on the screen. I'll do movies.map map over each movie and output the H3 and the image. All right, so again, very classic example of React here. So if you do that in Next.js, you, you get client-side rendering by default. So if we take a look here and inspect element, we can go to network. I'll do a hard empty refresh. I have fast 3G here. So as you can see, by default, you get an empty web page. And we have this main JS here. That's our big bundle uh, that loads up. So once that's loaded up, all the content gets rendered out on the screen. Really cool. So here, if you'd have other pages, it, it would be incredibly quick to jump between them because um, no more requests are going to happen uh, for a new file on the server. Right, or your HTML here, your document's gonna stay intact, and uh, this main JS is gonna dynamically change the content in it. All right, but as you can see live here, you can see that you essentially get a blank page until the whole JavaScript is loaded up. There we go, here we go. Now, another thing I wanna point out is as you can see, this loaded up this popular movies, enjoy your top 20 list. And this Spider-Man here and these cards are loaded up from a fetch uh, request, which is this here. Now, if you go to another page, the cool thing is after this app is loaded up, if I go to another page, all of this text that I manually added here is gonna instantly load up. And then parts where the fetch API happens it's gonna come in whenever it's ready. So essentially you get instant loading times, even though not all the content is loaded up on the screen. Now let's switch over and see how we can do SSR. So I'm gonna close this up and go to SSR. So essentially you get rid of all of this use state and use effect functionality. And um, next comes with a special function called get server side props. So you just create this export async get server side props. You fetch the data the same way. You do data.json and you return props, whatever you want to return. And then in your normal component, you're going to have access to it here. So you're passing the props down into here. And then everything else is still the same. So essentially you just create this get server side props. All right. And then 
let's let's give it the shot. So let's go over here. Let me turn this off because it's gonna be slow. Uh, here we go, server side, perfect. So here, if I do an empty cache and reload, let me slow this down. You're gonna see that once the page loads up, it's gonna return with the full content. All right, so all the fetching has been done on the server and all the the document has been pre-built already for us. So you're gonna get a full page rendered out. Now let's look at, we can also do a little inspect on this file here. So if I go here, as you can see, I get all the content rendered out nicely. So we have good SEO because we have the H trees, we have the images and everything properly rendered out. Okay, cool. And finally for SSG, all we need to do is say, not get server side props, we need to say get static props. And that's that. And everything else pretty much still stays the same. So this is gonna be the fastest because the content is already built out for us. So if we do a refresh here, there's, there's not gonna be any fetching done of the API that's been done when we uploaded it on Vercel. So it just gets the static file and that's that. So this is the fastest out of all the tree. All right, and that's basically the implementation of all the tree. So again, anytime you wanna do client side, you can easily do a use state with use effect and implement that. So I love that it gives you that flexibility. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. There's not much to it. I also found this example. I just realized I recreated it. Uh, and then I found this guy was a bit nicer so it, it is what it is um but yeah if you want to check out this example feel free to do it oh, i think you can see it better a bit here see like that loads up instantly and then the fetch api happens down here so that's the cool part about client side is boom instant loads and then things that still need to load from an api whatever that's going to pop in when it's going to pop in for the server side you'd have to wait for all of this to load up before you get back the full page. So let's see, server side. I mean, it loads up quite quickly here, but you get all the content already back. Um, and then let's see this one. Okay, that's the SSR. Oh, there's one more thing I wanna say is ISR, which is incremental, in, incremental static regeneration, geez. So you can set something called a validate in Next.js and what that does essentially, like in a blog post, for example, uh, you can set it to regenerate those HTML files for you every 10 seconds or so, or two seconds or whatever time you pick. So um, I guess when somebody leaves a comment or something, you can still have a bit of a um, you, content that, that doesn't really stale out too much. So that's it. So if you hear ISR, that just means that the files get rebuilt. So it's mostly updated. Okay, that's it. Hopefully you understood what I had to say. That's going to be it for me today. And I'll see you the next day. Bye.